and Rel and I are quite proud of our Appalachian ancestors and these remarkable men and women who came over the mountain years ago with basically nothing but whatever they were able to bring with them. And they were able to clear the land and build their own homes, and raise their own own food, provided their clothing, remarkable people. And in retrospect, they're no, our ancestors are no different than everyone's ancestors. They're people from, from all over the world who came searching for an opportunity, something that could be theirs. And they were willing to work very hard and sacrifice to achieve that dream. What it would have been like to have been this man uh, coming over with your, with, your, with your wife and with your ax and your, and your long rifle, cleared this land built this house. These are the most re independent, resourceful uh, people that I think you can look for. We, we, we know of the ancestors that came over the, uh, the ocean and settled along the East Coast. And they were remarkable people, but they primarily lived in towns and villages. Our ancestors evolved from that because they wanted something that was their own. So. They left the Williamsburgs and the Richmonds of Virginia, and they traveled over the mountains. And uh, in the late 1700s, there would have been no roads, so they would have come in here walking, uh, maybe with a horse. And that walk would have been about 300 miles. So it would have taken, what, six, eight weeks? How long would it take you to be walking through a wilderness trail, carrying the food that you needed to survive the carrying the supplies that you needed to, to sleep out and to, uh, to forage and to, to, to take care of yourself in the woods and ultimately remembering that you've got to carry with you everything that you need when you get to your destination, which in this instance would be over here in the Savage Grand area. Uh, and so you're coming on the James River Turnpike uh, and, and you're, 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 you're carrying with you, you, your wife and a horse everything you're gonna to need to survive for this six, eight weeks walk, everything you're gonna to have to need to come when you're here to build a cabin, to clear the land, to plant your gardens, uh, to provide for your well-being. It, it's, it, it's, it's a remarkable story. And it took men and women of strong determination that had unbelievable uh, character and drive and determination Today, just imagine what it would be like to walk along the interstate highway from Williamsburg to here, and just to camp out uh, uh, along the way. Take that back in, 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 in years gone by, and you couldn't have carried enough food. There's no way you could have carried enough food that would not have gone bad for six, eight weeks. So you had to hunt, you had to be able to 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 to, uh, to fish or to collect nuts and berries and to basically live off the land. And it's uh, they were remarkable people. And they didn't come in in caravans. They they basically came in in, in, in very small groups or maybe just a husband and wife. If you're coming into this area to perfect your claim under the Savage Grant, you had to build a cabin and live there for three years. Uh, which meant that you also had to be able to raise food and, and, and forage out off, off the woods. Um, so it was uh, uh, quite a task. So you had to, you, you, if you're coming into a particular piece of land that you had bought uh, uh, or you had received as a, a, a French and Indian War uh, soldier, uh, then you're there. And when you get there, it's going to be covered both with huge trees and you're going to be looking for water because you're going to have to have water uh, and, and, and you want uh, to, uh, to look at the trees because you're not wanting to, you're going to need trees to, to be cleared to plant your garden but at the same time you want to clear the trees so you can use them to build your shelter. We look at these big log houses today we think of that pioneer clearing and building that house, that would have been impossible. He would have been hard pressed to build a cabin much more than 10 by 12. Uh, 
and he would have really just been hard pressed to get his cabin built to where he could get in there before winter. So he's he's got to walk that six, uh, eight weeks from Williamsburg in here. He's got to get in here in time enough to, to start clearing the land, to start planting some food to get him through the winter, and he's got to start getting a shelter built. Uh, he's uh, he's he's going to be a busy busy person trying to get all of these things done before uh, before winter sets in. When he and his wife are leaving Williamsburg, what all do they have to carry with them? And uh, we're talking about the food. They'd need a firearm, they'd need a rifle, they'd need black powder, and they, they would need uh, flint because there wouldn't be matches. Uh, they would have to be figuring out what kind of shelter they would have, uh, if any, to protect them from the rains during the, their, their long walk in, in here. But when they got here, they would have to have axes, at least an axe, uh, and, 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 and some other basic instruments. But with an axe and a rifle, uh, an ingenious fellow could, could provide for his family. This, this whole venture is going to be uh, very, very difficult and, and fraught with lots of challenges. And many people would not make it. Uh, I mean, you're talking about walking through the wilderness, trying to survive on your own. Uh, this wouldn't be for the faint of heart. This wouldn't be for somebody who's just going out for a sunny uh, lark. This is somebody who has a deep conviction that this is their dream and they're willing to to do whatever it takes. Same thing's true of the wife. I mean, she's, she's, She's leaving, she's leaving her family, she's leaving her friends. Uh, she, she may very well have never been involved in anything like this. They probably have only been married a short period of time. And here she is walking through the woods with this man of her dreams who, who, who keeps telling her about what it's going to be like when they get on the other side of the mountains. But there's got to be. It's, a, it's, a, it's got to be a tremendous love story. You know, they've got to love each other. They've got to be willing to sacrifice. Unbelievable, they're giving up. They may never ever get to see anybody back on the other side of the mountains the rest of their life. And they're consciously making that decision because they want something badly enough that they're willing to give basically their all so that they can pursue that dream and go over on the other side of the mountains and own something that's theirs. And, and uh, that's our heritage. It's who we are. These remarkable men and women who came over here. This was covered by huge trees. So they had to be cut down by hand with an ax. And not a chainsaw, not a two-man cross-cut saw, but just arduous task it might have taken a day just to cut a tree down uh, and, 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 and you've got to clear clear the land in order to start planting your crops you've got to be a good enough hunter to go out and, and shoot and, and figure out how to preserve the food keeping it from going bad and you're in a hurry because quite frankly there's only one thing more important to you than shelter and that's food so you've got to be out hunting, you've got to be working in your garden, your wife's going to be busy working with all of these things as well. This, this, is, this isn't him and her. All of this work is together. There, there, isn't, there isn't this, this is man's work and this is women's work. I mean, they're working together uh, in, 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 ever, in every respect. It's not that he's building a cabin and that she's working in the, in the garden. They're doing everything together, in fact, uh, they really don't have enough hands in either place, so uh, it, it, it's, it's truly a joint venture. The 
future is much going to be very much dependent upon uh, whether they have children. But even with children, it's going to be a long time before those children can be uh, of, of any help doing major construction. And together then, as your family grows, you can move out of that trapper's cabin into a, a, a more traditional, what we would think of as a log cabin. With, with, with multiple rooms and a loft area for the, for the children and, and it's something that looks much more like what we think of as a, as a log cabin today. Well, you know, this, this, this cabin that they're building, they're building with a, with, with a great deal of pride. They expect it to last for a long time. Uh, and uh, that, that pride that you see in the cabin is you'll see in everything else they, uh, they do. And you got to you got to eat, but you also have to have clothing. Uh, and and if you if you lived over in Williamsburg, you know, and you wanted a wool coat, you went to the farmer and you got some wool. And you went to the carding mill and they carded it for you. Then you took it to the spinner and she spun it, and got you some wool. So that's how you got a wool coat in a community like a Williamsburg. But if you're over on this side of the mountain and that lady wanted a wool coat, she has to be able to do all of those tasks herself. And she can't say, I'll take Tuesday off and work on my coat. She has to do each of those tasks at the end of the day after all of her other laborious, time-consuming challenges. So uh, uh, it's just hard to, to imagine the skills and the resourcefulness and the ingenuity, ingenuity and the creativity that these ancestors would have had to have in order to make the tools or to make the implements. If you, if you go through the heritage farm, you, you find men making apple peelers and fruit presses and sausage grinders and lighting devices. So, you know, you, there wasn't a country store. There's, there isn't a... a, a a, a Sears and Roebuck catalog. If you wanted something, you either brought it with you, or you learned to make it, or you learned to do without. Uh, and so when you see these labor-saving devices, and devices they would use to carry water, uh, uh, try to figure out, try to figure out how to make a bucket, friend. Just try to figure out how to make uh, something. Uh, that'll, that'll hold water uh, with, with just wooden things that you've done with your axe and your and your and your asses, and they, they, they had to do that. So there are tremendous tremendous skills in trying to figure out. Okay, we now got our house. We've got to, we've we, we've got a garden, but now we got to have lighting. Uh, we we need to carry water to and from the from the creek or ultimately from the well. Uh, the dreams of today will be different than the dreams of yesterday. The dreams of tomorrow will be different than the dreams of today. But this common ingredient is always to make dreams come true is hard work, dogged determination, perseverance, never giving up. And those are the lessons that we can learn from our ancestors that will apply to, to our children that will enable them to have the types of futures that we want them to have and enjoy as well. Well, it, it, it's, it's been exciting to see the, the story continue to unfold of, of Heritage Farm. And uh, we, we, we were the beneficiary of some national publicity that was just phenomenal. Uh, being visited by the American Pickers uh, was a was a great experience. Henrell and I loved it. Frank and Mike were, were great fellas. But that exposure is really proven to be phenomenal. How many people from all over the world see those episodes and come uh, and, and, and want to, to find out more about Heritage Farm. And then following that with our History Channel friends, we were involved in the two-hour documentary before the Hatfield and McCoy uh, series.
put together a, a high-tech uh, interactive uh, uh, technology where children can actually see bees and watch them pollinate in, in the gardens using technology that's beyond me to, uh, to, to, to assist them as they learn with their hands and their fingers and thumbs. Life is, uh, life is good, life is fantastic. Uh, we should never take it for granted. We should dream big dreams. We should never be satisfied with just mediocre status quo and then be willing to uh, to do what it takes to make those dreams come, come true. My wife and I didn't collect all of this just to preserve a bunch of stuff from the past. We've done it to try to make sure that we give ourselves today and in the future a better realization of what it took uh, to create what we take for granted today and start realizing the characteristics of the people that we need to emulate in order to provide ourselves uh, an exciting future. We still want all of our visitors to Heritage Farm to leave with an appreciation of the need to learn from the past, to gain an appreciation of the present, and dream about a better tomorrow in the future. Eventually you have a community where there's enough people that they have built their houses, they've helped each other, they've, they've built a church, they've built a school, and eventually a community uh, grows up. But it all started because of that uh, uh, dream that somebody had of, of, of owning something that was theirs. And they were willing to work very hard and sacrifice everything they had in order to make that dream come true. And that's still who we are today. If people expect to get something from nothing, it just doesn't happen. The lessons that we want to visitors to Heritage Farm and our school children to, to realize is that the lessons that we can learn from our past that are loud and clear true today is that if you want something, you must be willing to work hard for it. And if you do, there's a tremendous satisfaction in appreciation for, for a job well done and, and looking at it and saying, you know, we did it. You need to have to slow down, uh, smell the roses, take a walk and, and realize that life is really wonderful and enjoy and Seize every moment. If you get the idea that I'm uh, unabashedly proud of, of these un of our ancestors, it's because you know I am. I think they're. Uh, I think they they, they 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 should remind us of the very best of who we could be. Uh, if we if we dream big dreams and we were willing to work hard and sacrifice to make those dreams come true uh, You know the guy wasn't wanting to own the world. He just was wanting a little piece of land that was his and that and that he uh, He could be proud of uh, that he had taken care of his family uh, and laid down at night Put his head on his pillow, said, well done.